to the next episode of Stuff Band Directors Wish They Had Time to Teach. I'm Steve Bottom, your host. I am a performing artist and educational clinician for Bach Trumpets, division of Conselmer Corporation. And today I'm going to talk to you about the straight mute. Um, this isn't going to be about mutes per se, so much as the use of the straight mute um, as a pedagogical tool, in particular for focusing the tone. And I was very lucky that um, I um, gave my first solo um, when I was in sixth grade. Went really well. And um, not only my band director, but you know, other music teachers were telling my parents, gotta get this kid some lessons, gotta get this kid some lessons. And it took a while to find uh, a teacher uh, that was a, a good fit. When I did, I was actually in seventh grade, and uh, his name was Rob Parton. He was an undergraduate at the University of Kentucky, and now he's a world famous trumpet player, and he went on to a huge career. And my only regret is that I was um, so young and inexperienced that I really wasn't at a level yet to fully take advantage of what Rob had to offer. I mean, it wasn't quite to the point of, okay, kid, here's first valve, second valve, third valve, but you know, we were maybe half a step above that. Um, Rob graduated, moved on. So I went without a teacher probably for about six months. I was on the waiting list uh, for the, the top private teacher in, in my area. And then he finally had an opening and his name was Rich Elman. Um, Rich and I, it was, uh, Kind of strange, actually, how our paths kind of intertwined. Uh, we grew up in the same neighborhood, literally one street over uh, from the other. Um, my first high school, I went to two different high schools, uh, was the high school he went to and graduated from. And uh, there's some other similarities there. Uh, other than the case, I think he was about 23, 24 years older than I was. But, you know, there were a lot of parallels. So I always thought that was, um, you know, kind of neat. Anyway, at the time, Rich was the professor of trumpet at Eastern Kentucky University in Richmond, uh, just about 30 miles uh, from where I lived in Lexington. Uh, he went on to become trumpet professor at Michigan State and is now retired from there. And Rich, um, you know, I've had a lot of different teachers and influences and have been fortunate enough by this time to have at least studied in master class, if not privately, you know, with a lot of the great names in the field. But to this day, uh, the fundamental setup, philosophy of who I am as a player goes back to when I was in eighth grade and Rich setting those fundamentals. Uh, Rob really didn't have much time to uh, set all that in play with me. Uh, we just uh, had maybe um, 10 or 12 lessons at most before he graduated. Um, so to this day, you know, when I'm having trouble and I have to fall back on fundamentals and, and kind of rebuild again, I go back to the basics of, um, of what Rich taught. Now specifically, the first thing we worked on in our lessons is he had me buy um, a straight mute. I had a what <clears throat> we call a fiber straight mute, you know, one that's basically not metal. Uh, it's usually cardboard. Stone lined is the um, most common brand. They're the red and white ones. I had one of those. He's like, no, it needs to be metal. So we went and got a metal one. I think it was a Vacchiano uh, model. And um, uh, <laughs> I think for the first two months at least, um, we spent more time in my lessons with the mute in the horn than out. And what he was trying to do was get me to focus my tone and play in the center of the pitch. This is important for several reasons. Not only is that the uh, true tonal center, so you're playing in tone, or in tune, excuse me, um, it also provides a better sound, better tone on the horn, and makes it uh, easier to fit into an ensemble. You know, it can sound like you're playing out of tune, uh, even when you're technically not, you're just not playing in the center of the pitch. And what he would have me do is he'd just have me play a G in the staff. Put the mute in. And what he would do is he'd have me bend the tone up and down and let me find the tonal center myself. And he said, you know you found it when the mute sizzles. And you'll hear I'll bend it up and down. You know, that really rich, well, sizzle, as he, as he put it. I've never found a better word for it. Um, from just individual notes, um, 
we eventually moved on. It's got stuck in the bell, sorry. Um, and we would do uh, simple flow studies, like. And again, if it wasn't sizzling, he'd have me stop on that pitch, uh, whatever pitch I was on, and uh, have me look for the sizzle. Now, um, I will be in a later episode talking more about mutes in particular, all the different kinds. Um, I probably own over 40 different mutes. You know, they're, I've paid anywhere from $7 for them to literally over $100 for a single mute made of all types of materials, uh, plastic, cardboard, wood, not only metal, but various kinds of metal. Um, they all have their place. Uh, I, I like to draw a lot of analogies, uh, or excuse me, parallels, between trumpet and golf in that, uh, you know, they're both very gear heavy. For somebody who likes to collect a lot of stuff, a lot of gear, you know, for their hobby or their avocation, uh, both trumpet and golf are ready-made for spending money. You know, all different kinds of putters and drivers and wedges and whatnot. You know, with trumpet, you've got all different kinds of horns and mouthpieces and mutes. And, you know, you can even get really, um, <laughs> really specialized. And there are guys that, um, and gals, uh, that um, get into um, what type of um, valve caps, you know, little buttons on top of the valves, um, what those are and what they're made of. And, you know, do you use regular valve cap bottoms or heavy cap bottoms and if you do you know how do you distribute the weight like i said you can get about as uh, complicated as you want on the subject but for now when um you're first of all with your trumpet players i know the uh, fiber mutes uh, as i call the cardboard mutes are cheaper but if you're only going to own one mute one straight mute it should really be a metal one um first of all it just cuts through the band a little better you know makes a just uh, personally a better sound and then also like i said it's um it's also of, of use as a teaching tool for centering the tone and to this day you know rich has so ingrained that in me and then he had me do this at the time i studied with him i studied with him from eighth grade and then uh, the semester i graduated high school was also, also the semester he won the michigan state job so it worked out perfectly that i went to college and he went off um, and became famous um, but anyway, um, you know, to this day, if something doesn't sound right or just a spot check yourself, you know, he would just have me take the mute randomly and stick it in and play a note. And, you know, are you, are you sizzling? And sometimes yes, sometimes not quite. But um, more than anything, um, there, there were probably three really fundamental things I took uh, from my study with Rich. And that was the first and um, probably the most useful um, from becoming a, a professional trumpet player later is that um, I was often complimented on my tone. Now, um, you know, there are people that can multiple tone faster than me. Um, I can play high notes, but there are people that play higher notes than me. But um, for some reason, in competitions, national and international uh, competitions even, I would get complimented on my tone. And I'm, I'm convinced it was um, back to eighth grade, you know, with Rich and him uh, training my ear you know, to hear the center of that pitch and also muscle memory as well. You know, you bend it up, you bend it down, and then right when that mute sizzles, you remember what it feels like. With trumpet players, a good friend of mine, uh, Ryan Resky, which is, he's a um, very notable trumpet player um, in New York City area. Um, I know Ryan uh, will be nodding his head as he's, as he's watching this, that, um, that so much um, as trumpet players, you know, it's like any uh, athlete, that, you know, you know, as a gymnast, what it feels like, you know, to, you know, to jump up on that, um, gymnast horse. I can't remember what it's called that they use, or, you know, what it feels like, you know, as a basketball player, when you're going up for a dunk, personally, I wouldn't know what that feels like, but I'm sure they do. So, um, even with trumpet, it's as much muscle memory as anything. So you're not only training the ear, um, you're training the muscles as well. So I'll have, uh, more to say on this later and I'll have, um, at least one, maybe more than one episode just on mutes and mute selection and 
what's absolutely essential as opposed to um, you know what's uh, a little more specialized and, and superfluous. So again, thank you for your time and good night.